In Boston, one of the things that they did, which was very cheap and apparently quite effective, was to just add the words, we welcome interfaith families to this event, to the bottom of all the flyers that fight events that were sponsored by the Federation. It's just a line of type. And it basically tells people, please come to this event. We are not going to spend the whole time talking about why you are terrible. I think it, this is a good best practice, right? Another one is family programs that include uh, parents and children's activities. The number one reason that we found in our most recent survey of our um, constituency, when we surveyed them about Christmas and Hanukkah and what people are doing for the summer holidays, the most, the, the most important reason why people join synagogues is to raise their children as Jews. So one really effective thing that people can do is Tat Shabbat. Honestly, Tat Shabbat works. We have same faith families. It's really, it works great. I mean, even the name Tat Shabbat doesn't make you happy to think about all the Tats on Shabbat and they run around. It's great. It's a terrific idea. And another way that they've reached out to interfaith families specifically with specifically targeted programming is through a program called the Mother Circle, which has been, um, there's an organization called the Jewish Outreach Institute, and they train people in how to do groups with non-Jewish moms who are raising Jewish kids to give you some of the background because, you know, you don't have it. This is a way to include um, moms or dads who want to learn this stuff to support their kids, even though they are not in the process of converting to Judaism for whatever reason. They're not, maybe they're not planning to do that. Um, we can still support them. So this is another way that family programs can work because people come, people who come to our site are almost entirely moms. Like the largest group is moms. Number one group, Jewish moms married to non-Jewish dad. Number two group, non-Jewish moms married to Jewish dad. Moms, which is great because I am a mom, so I can relate to that and I like that part. Um, but I don't know if we can get, I mean, it was true before I came here and we had a non-mom. We had a you know, guy in his 20s. We still got moms, so it's not because of me. Um, so another thing that people can do that's explicit in the Jewish community is to have workshops for interfaith couples both before they get married and after they get married, to talk about what kinds of decisions they might make about life cycle issues, and to give um, basic information about how to uh, raise a kid in the Jewish community. And these workshops can address these difficult family relationship issues that you brought up, where you have two sets of grandparents and they each would like the child to be raised in their religion, and how do you relate to them, to their decisions. And one of the things that occurred to me when I was first working here is that this is just an extension of the same stuff that all new parents have to deal with, with their parents. It's just one added wrinkle to this problem of, I am the mom now, so I decide what we're going to do. And even though you think it's silly that we have a law in my state, that we, now this is a, not an example that my parents will be able to get out of it, even though you think it's silly that there's a law in my state to put the cop child in a car seat, as has happened to some young parents, I'm still going to do that, thank you, right? So it's not that being Jewish is like riding in the car seat, because the car seat is very important, but, um, and universal, and the law, and being Jewish is not the law. Um, but I'm just saying that basically it's part of this whole process where the young parent has to establish that they are the ones making the decision for their household. And how can they have a good relationship with their own parents if they decide to do things that are different? Like car seats are are too too obvious. Not being a vegetarian, right? If you're a vegetarian, your parents are like, why is the child how is the child going to get protein, right? So this is kind of like this. Yes. Well, I just published an article by some friends of mine who I nudged 
Norway's first generation in the United States. So nobody in his family circumcises. And the wife was raised in an Orthodox synagogue. So there was no way she was not going to circumcise. And he knew this before they got married. She didn't want to get married until they could settle this is a question. And he said that he was really surprised that the circumcision was incredibly meaningful to him. It was really small. And they named the baby after his grandfather and talked about the grandfather at the circumcision ceremony. And, you know, he didn't come from a religious family and, and invested the baby name with a lot of meaning to him that it did it this way. So there was like a real acknowledgement of his family. And also when they got married, they couldn't have a ketubah because there, there wasn't a lot of marriage, but they had a, what she called a ketubah-like document, or KLD. And in the, K, the KLD, she had translated, it was in Hebrew, not Aramaic, English, and Norwegian. So that his family was acknowledged, even though it's a Jewish form, there was Norwegian content. So I thought that was a good way. Um, you know, he, he, he will probably not convert to Judaism. He's agnostic. I mean, he likes Judaism, but he doesn't believe in God. He cannot become an Orthodox Jew or believe in God. So um, they, they had to come up. They really had to live very intentionally to think a lot about what they're doing to make these things work for them. Um, and his, his parents were OK with it. But you know, he, they got both sides of the family. They were marrying in their late 30s. So both, both sets of parents were pretty happy. His mother at the wedding said, ha, I get them for Christmas every year. <laughs> they don't fight over who gets them for Pesach, who gets them for Thanksgiving, Christmas is rather Pesach for family. So, so there, you know, there are ways you can work it out, right? Yes. Parents look at other parents of, of young adults and say, you must have done something wrong that they intermarry. 